Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at old time bowing technique. Now, um, old time and bluegrass fiddle are very different beasts and um, one of the main differences is that whilst in bluegrass uh, it's all about using the tune to demonstrate your technique, uh, in old time it's all about using your technique to demonstrate the tune. And um, one of the most important techniques in old time fiddling is the bowing and there are many different approaches to the bowing but it's about kind of serving the phrase um, and we have a number of different things called shuffles and I'm going to show you the um, the Nashville shuffle, the Georgia shuffle, the Cinco shuffle, the smooth shuffle and finally the pulse. These are different approaches to bowing and they serve different purposes the one that's best known and probably uh, most widely used is the Nashville Shuffle. So we're going to start off with that. The Nashville Shuffle is all separate bows. So this is all sometimes called a saw stroke. So in, uh, there are no slurs, it's all ups and downs. Um, but you have a regular pattern and the, the pattern is... So it's down, up, down, up down, up, down, up, down, up. So it's a long and two shorts. And this looks like the simplest thing in the world <laughs> and it takes some people a lot of time just to get this. It's kind of a standalone thing in itself because this is often used um, in what's called the taters, which is a type of introduction. And if you do it with... Um, uh, open strings and A and an E for example, if we're in the key of A, then and that makes a very good intro to a tune. Some tunes fit themselves naturally into this rhythm and the one I just started there, Old Joe Clark, is the classic example. It's often the first tune that anybody learns. So. This is the, the pattern uh, going all the way through the melody. And uh, you can do the same thing with drones. When you play a shuffle all the way through a tune, uh, it really evens it out and you could say it homogenizes it and takes away all the fun. <laughs> Uh, it's, that's a good thing to do if you are playing for dancing because they like a steady beat and they like predictability, the dancers. Um, but if you're playing purely for listening, then as with all of these shuffles and patterns I'm going to talk about, uh, you don't want to overdo them. But it is a good idea to overdo them when you're learning the pattern. So we're going to do a lot of overdoing. <laughs> I've got a video all about the Nashville Shuffle which will take you through that in more detail. I'll just point out it's possible to do, um, instead of putting the accent on the down and then the up, or in other words putting the accent on the longs, then you can put the accent on the downbeat. Which I think is actually more useful. Uh, and notice that with the Nashville Shuffle you're alternating between a down and an up. Um, so the, the accent, which, whichever way you put the accent, the accent is always coming on alternate bows, down and up. Uh, which is not the same with the next one we're going to do. Not all uh, melody phrasing will fit into da 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 da, but by slurring the first two notes, you can, if you've got a, a, a tune which has a lot of quavers, a lot of eighth notes, you can still use the Nashville Shuffle. So for example with Turkey in the Straw. So there we 
were still doing da 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 but there was a load of quavers in there that were kind of getting naturally uh, dragged into the pattern. So you can use the Nashville Shuffle if you want just on tunes and phrases where it naturally fits in or you can extend it into the whole of a tune or into large parts of a tune which as I say adds drive and it adds predictability but it reduces the interest of the tune. Now a second um, shuffle which I really like the Georgia shuffle is a bit smoother and the main difference is that all of the accents come on the down instead of being down and up. So um, if we start with an up and then do an accent on the down. So as you can see, it's smoother. Um, the, the only complication about this one is the fact that uh, you usually want to start off by doing two slurs and then three slurs after that. But that's a good exercise for starting off. As with the Nashville Shuffle, some tunes naturally fit into this and uh, a good example is the 8th of January. So again we forced the pattern over the whole tune and many people would argue it doesn't actually belong on the whole tune or some people would say <laughs> it doesn't belong on any of it but the uh, the Georgia shuffle I found very useful and it's good uh, when you extend it into bluegrass playing as well because it's got this kind of smooth feel to it. Now there's a another kind of shuffle called the Cinco shuffle and um, this is one of these things that uh, it exists in shadowy corners of the internet. <laughs> oh, well, the cat's calling. So what, what it is, it's a down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And played on a single note. Da, 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 da. Now syncopation is something that is very important and natural in old time fiddle music and uh, so uh, having patterns to deal with the syncopation is a very good idea. So in theory the synco shuffle is an excellent idea. Uh, there are some tunes again where uh, certain phrases kind of call out for this and uh, Big Sayote is a good example. So we're going to play the whole of Big Sayote using the same pattern. So that's a good one for practicing the pattern. Um, again, you would argue uh, you kind of spoil the tune if you do it all the time, but it is good for learning the, the, the pattern. Now let's have a look at Fisher's Hornpipe. And on this, I'm going to do three different patterns, including the Cinco Shuffle. Uh, the first one, the first pattern. Da 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 So that's five separate and three slurred. This has no name as far as I'm aware. Um, but it is a very useful pattern. If I were to give it a name, uh, I could probably uh, persuade people that this was a real thing. The, the five and the three. Rather than just something that I have latched onto. And I do suspect that the Cinco Shuffle is the same thing. But that's another story. 
So, um, let's do the first half of Fisher's Hornpipe. That's a single shoulder. Da 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 In this, uh, this arrangement of Fisher's Hornpipe, we're basically using the different shuffles to add rhythmic interest, which wasn't there before. Because you could play the whole thing da 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 just as a solo stroke. Um, and you'd be hard pressed to find rhythmic interest there. But by forcing these um, different shuffles on there, you do add rhythmic interest, whether or not it's in the original phrases which um, is uh, maybe a good idea, maybe not a good idea. Another syncopated shuffle is what's called a smooth shuffle. And that is a down, 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 up, 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 down, up, da, 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 da. And the change of direction is what gives the accent. Da, 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 da. So let's try uh, 8th of January and let's put it just on the a couple of phrases of the B section. So that is a good use of the uh, the shuffle to actually accent the uh, to, to make best use of those phrases because you could do and that feels kind of mechanical doing like that whereas a slur that feels good. Let's try doing uh, the same shuffle all the way through that. Um, And again, you'll see we've kind of uh, it. It takes the interest away from the shuffle if you do it too much. Um, and I think um, that by calling it a shuffle, I am tempted to overuse it, and probably you are because the Nashville shuffle can be naturally used over and over again and a lot. Whereas um, I think these are not so much shuffles as phrasings. Um, uh, so yes, there, there is this danger of overdoing. Finally, let's look at the pulse. And um, my guru for anything to do with old time Boeing is of course Bruce Molsky. And he does talk about the pulse. He never mentions any of these other shuffles that, that I'm aware of anyway. Um, and I suspect he knows a great deal more about how this is supposed to work than I do. But anyway, the, the pulse is a good one. Um, it's, a, um, it's something like this. Da 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 ya da 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 ya. So it's within a, a slur. If you dig in a little bit and you just angle the bow slightly so that instead of giving you one note, it gives you two notes. I think that's got a really nice feel and you can apply that to a tune like Candy Girl and I did a video on this which includes the pulse.
and once you've really got your fingers around that, that uh, there's a really nice feel to that. So uh, there's a great deal to do in uh, old time bowing. That they certainly when I was first learning fiddle, I had this uh, this feeling um, that old time fiddle was the poor cousin of bluegrass. That all the fancy stuff happened in bluegrass. <laughs> But the, the subtlety of bowing in old time is great and um, you will never get to the bottom of bowing in old time music. So it's worth spending time on it, it's worth thinking about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. Hope you found this useful, if you would like a copy of the, all of the dots for this then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. If you would like to get all of my PDFs from all of my videos, which is uh, I think over 400 now, then do uh, join me on Patreon and that will help to keep these videos coming. Thank you for watching, I'll see you again soon.